Hey chatters, I'm Joe, the CEO of Synaptic Labs. We've trained thousands of professionals on how to use AI responsibly and practically, and are creators of the Professor Synapse prompt, which has over 100,000 uses in the GPT store. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through all of the Anthropic Claude tools that you can use so that you can really leverage this generative AI provider. Let's dive in. The first thing we want to make sure we do is see if the tools are actually enabled. To do that, we want to come up to this sidebar. You're going to want to come down to your plan right here. And then we're going to click settings. In settings, at least as of recording this, you want to come down to chat features. And you're going to see we have a variety of things we can turn on. You want to make sure we have artifacts, AI powered artifacts, experimental, make sure you have this code execution and file creation tool. And that should be good. You make sure you have all that on. Again, this might have changed by the time I had this. So just generally make sure you have everything turned on. At least as of right now, this code execution and file creation has replaced the analysis tool. So you don't need both. I don't think you can even do both. So just have this one on. Okay, let's hop in and test out some of these tools. The first tool is something called a canvas. In Claude, it's called an artifact because they just need to be different in everything. But the idea is it's going to create you a little side pullout to work on content in a little bit more focused manner. So let's work with Claude to create an artifact with some text that we want to mess around with. So we're going to give this simple prompt, write me a blog about how to use tools with Claude. And very important, say in an artifact, you could probably say in a canvas, some other sort of language that's going to let it know that you wanted to create this little sidebar thing you can work with. You can see it's starting to type something. It's creating this claw-tools-blog.md. That's a markdown. So we're gonna let this run through and in a second it should be all done and we can pull it up on the side. Okay, it's all done writing and you can see it brought this up right here and we have a nice little blog about how to use tools. Now, a lot of the other providers, they give you like these little things you can hit, shorten this or Change the tone. We don't have that with Claude, but that's fine. We can just use the chat. Just a couple quick things. If you like it as is, you can just copy it. You can download as a PDF, or if you just hit this download button, it'll just download as a markdown. We're gonna get into file creation a little bit later, but pretty much this is what you get. But we can go back and forth and have it actually edit this. Unfortunately, too, the downside of this is we can't edit within this actual artifact. So I can't like highlight this and try to delete it. It's only through this chat that we're able to change things, but that's okay. So I might do something like write this for a high school audience because I want simpler language. Maybe I want it to be a little shorter, whatever it might be. So now it's going to rewrite this and you can see it's doing something called a diff, a differential. I can't actually see what it's changing, but you can see that it's added nine things and removed nine things. It's going to keep going through this and updating it based on whatever I said. And you can keep going through this process in terms of editing it. You just tell Claude what you wanted to edit, maybe copy and paste something from over here and tell it what you want to change. And now we can see it completely rewrote the blog post. It edited several things, adding lots, deleting lots, so that it could be more for an audience that's related to high schoolers. Artifacts aren't just for text, though. It can actually do code as well, especially if you're looking for more front end website type of thing. So I'm just going to tell it turn into an interactive website that teaches students how to use cloud tools. And we'll send that and we'll give it a minute and it should write some code and we should be able to see what that looks like. So obviously, this is fairly simple, I guess you would say, but you can see it created this little website where I can click on things. They don't necessarily do anything. Right now, you'd have to come back and forth, but you can create more website based or interactive things. And you can see this is an HTML, which is what websites are built out of. You can make it out of a bunch of different things. It also has the code you can actually look at. And again, you don't even necessarily need to know how to code. If you have some feedback, which obviously this is pretty terrible and doesn't actually work. You can give it that feedback and go back and forth until it's able to do or look like whatever you want it to look like. Claude is also really good at file creation, so it can create all kinds of different files. For example, the original thing that we wrote was in something called Markdown, 
which isn't something necessarily you're going to want to send to someone, right? You're probably working in Word or something like that. So we can actually tell it to convert this into a Word document if we don't want to do it as a PDF. So I'm going to say, can you convert the blog into a Word doc? But it's not just Word docs. We can convert it into pretty much anything we want, including things like a PowerPoint, which is what I can do after this. And here you see it created the docx and I can even upload it to my drive or just download it as a docx. But we're not limited to just docx, we can also do a PowerPoint. So let's just ask it to do that. Turn this into an engaging PowerPoint. Okay, here we go. That took a little while and obviously this probably is going to be super great, but we can see it created about nine slides going through everything that we wanted to talk about in terms of the blog and the tools. So if you're actually doing this right, you're definitely going to want to get that outline first and ask it to create it. But all it's doing is pretty much like making a website more or less as a slide and then converting this to a PowerPoint. So you can just download it as a PowerPoint. So obviously still lots of limitations. You can see it went through a lot of iterations without me having to do anything, but is a good way to, especially if you have a slide deck template already, you can just feed that for the style guide and whatever and create something quick and dirty. Next up, let's talk about data analysis. So we're at a point now with these models, since they can run arbitrary code, they can actually do analyses on spreadsheets that you feed it and create all kinds of nice, even interactive charts. So I have fed this some data that is completely made up around some tools synthetically generated, and we're going to ask it some questions and do some analyses on the data so you can see how this works. Typically, when you're doing data analysis, since it doesn't have any context about what you're actually uploading to it, you usually want to say, review this first and recommend what we should analyze. You might already know what you want to analyze, but just good practice to make sure it can understand and actually navigate the data set that you've uploaded. So it gave us lots of options, criteria scoring and ranking, benchmarking, security compliance, all this kind of stuff that we might want to do. So let's just pick one, have it run it, and we're going to ask it to create an interactive chart for us as well to follow up. So I just told it do number one, let's get the fitness score, then create an interactive page so I can mess around and figure out what I want. So let's give it a few minutes. It's going to run these analyses and we'll see what happens. Just want to mention, you can actually look at what it's coding up. So it's using Python, which makes sense. We're dealing with data and it's going to run some of these analyses, create some scores and output some information for us. Okay, here we go. That took a while. I'm pretty amazed at how much code this thing can spit out. But now we have a nice little tool we can use to help us make a decision. So we have some filters here we can change up top in terms of how we want to weight things. So am I more worried about performance or cost or security, whatever it might be? I'm over 100%, so see how it works. But you can see here, then this will allow me to categorize. So do I just want to look at data, just retrieval, just vision or all? Can I sort by the fitness score, costs, whatever? We can do ch a chart versus a grid. And you can see here, I can do an add to compare. I don't even know what this goes to. Maybe it's something up here or whatever. Yeah, it's right up here. So you can actually compare different things. So this is something that I could have never done right by myself. We've taken data that is true. We've run analyses on it, again, just using natural language. And we had it spin up this little dashboard we can use to help us make smarter decisions based on what we want. So obviously you'd want to take some time up front to plan this out, decide on the different analyses you want to run, and probably have some vision for what you want this dashboard to do so it actually does what you want. But you can see here, it's pretty incredible. All we got to do is upload some sort of spreadsheet file ask it to analyze it in whatever way we want, or ask it to look at it and tell us the, like how we might analyze it and then create some sort of interactive dashboard to have fun with the data. Next up, we have web search. So again, just there's no like button you press necessarily. I think you might have to turn it on. Yep. So if you come into the search and tools here, you do want to make sure that web search is turned on. But once it's on, unless you tell it to research online, it's not going to. So just make sure you have the words like, search the web or look online or something like that. And so if we hit enter, it should take a second. And what it's going to do 
is it can essentially perform a Google search based on some sort of question, right? It's probably just going to ask what is Synaptic Labs. And so now it's looking at different websites, it's fetching them, it's reading them, and then it's going to take a minute, but then it will return sort of information about our company. It can do this back and forth. You can see it made multiple searches and it returns about 10 results each time. So it reads all those and then you're going to see it actually has our nice little inline links here so it can actually go to where it's pulling this information from. This is pretty straightforward. Pretty much all the providers do this the same way. So we're going to dive into now deep research. They just call it research in Claude. You may or may not have this depending on the plan you have, but this is actually one where you need to click the button on and you can see it turn to blue, which now means what I ask. It's actually going to do some deep research. It's going to crawl multiple websites and generate a really in-depth report for us. So I'm going to say, take learned about Synaptic Labs and do a full market research. So we're just going to let this run. It might come back to me with some questions. It's a toss up, especially if you have thinking turned on, whether or not it'll come back and ask you a few clarifying questions. You really sure should spend some time developing your research question parameters and all that kind of stuff. It is going to ask if we should enable some connectors. So for example, you might have a connection to your Google Drive or whatever it might be. I'm going to actually turn this off. I don't want it using any connectors for the research, but we'll confirm. But in the future, and we'll talk about connectors in a different video, you can hook it up to different data sources or information. So it can actually use that to do the research as well. You can also obviously just upload files that you want it to use for the research. The first thing it's going to do is create its research plan. So it's essentially just going to create several research questions that it wants to look up. And then once it has that, it's going to actually dive into the interwebs and try to answer the questions that it set up for itself and then develop that actual report for you. So this is going to take several minutes. We'll leave it to do its thing. We'll hop in and out and then we'll come back when it's all done. We can see it created its research plan. So it's going to look at market size, competitive analysis, industry trends, strategic positioning, and some recommendations. It's outlined some key entities it wants to look at, the query type, like what it's going to look into, and its overall research plan. Now you're going to see it's already gathered 435 sources. You can see overall the main ones that it's pulling from, but it has another 375 it's, it's looking at. And then you can see here, at least high level, these are the questions that it's looking for answers to. Customer segments, pain points, trends, researching competitors, researching training and education competitors, major competitors, lots of competition, and looking at consulting and the market sizes. So you can see the sources. It's still finding sources. It's gone up. It's going to keep going up and keep looking at stuff. So again, we're going to leave this for a few minutes. We're already about three minutes in. It's going to take between five and 10 minutes for it to generate the report. It's finding the Professor Synapse prompt is comparing us to all these major providers, not understanding that it's just a prompt. So just again, importance of making sure you're giving it clear guidance and understanding about what you're looking for, any information you can give it up front. Just to point out, you can tell this one's done because it's not flashing anymore. And it's given you this little paragraph about more or less what it found. So we have a couple that are done. It's still doing research on sort of three different topics. At the okay, it only took a cool 33 minutes and 26 seconds. Normally it takes five minutes, so I don't know what was so crazy about this one. But you can see now if we come into here, we have a nice, oh my God, this is so long. I'm actually going to pull this out in a second. I want to know how long this actually is. Holy crap. But everything's cited, so it's going to tell you exactly where it's pulling the stats from and whatever it is in line. So let's see. If I download this as a PDF, I want to know how many pages this is. Oh, that's not so bad. It's only eight pages. Okay, you get the point, though, is it's done. It's looked at 435 different sources and written this really in-depth report. And then you can use all the tools that we already use if you want to try to create some sort of PowerPoint based on this or shorten it or create some sort of graphic for it, you can do that just by talking to Claude. So that's it for our basic tools with Claude. We have the canvas, which is called artifacts. 
Claude does not have image generation, so you're not going to be able to create images with Claude, at least not directly. Web search and deep research, which for some reason took way too long. And then creating different file types as well as doing data analysis. I hope this was helpful. If you want to learn more about how to use Claude tools, definitely contact us. And I highly recommend you take our AI readiness report assessment. This is going to let you know kind of where you're at as an organization and provide some potential strategies for you. So I'm excited to see you in the next video. I hope this was helpful and definitely leave in the comments how you're using Claude tools.